Hello 171 class, this is Mr. Blevins and I'm going to show you how to do the polynomial function for your functions project. So I have got open a couple windows here. I've got geogebra.org slash classic. That's where we're going to put our image and ultimately make our model over the image and get the points that to make our model. And then we're going to transfer those over to Desmos dot com slash calculator. All right, so back to GeoGebra first. We're going to click the slider tool and come down here to image. Choose where your image is located. You guys may have seen this image before. Now I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger. You can just drag those buttons down on the bottom to make it a little bigger. And then I'm going to kind of move it up uh, a little bit into the first quadrant. All right, no big deal. Now, what I'm going to do here is you need to pick. So, you know, this isn't the greatest example of a polynomial. I just wanted something that you guys would have seen around campus. And, and, and again, to know you are finding your own images and taking your own images. You are not finding these on the internet. So, you need to make sure you're taking your own images here. And I'm going to do, um, looks like we got one two, three, four, five bins right here. I'm just going to do, and then I'm not going to go all the way over to here. So I'm going to say five bins. So that'll be a degree six polynomial that I'm going to model this with. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, put this thing into the back by clicking, right clicking, hitting settings, and making this a background image. All right, and once I'm done with that, click the little red X that was out of the screen, that little red X up there. And now I'm ready to plot points. So I do not, A and B are not part of the A and B is what I use to stretch this image. So I want to turn those off. They're not part of this. But I do want to click back on the point tool here and then add points to this thing. So right at the end where the tip into your cursor is is where the point's going to be. So I'm just going to randomly put points in here and try to get some of those peaks and valleys where the bends are taking place. It's not vital that you get all those peaks and valleys you do again want to get a minimum of seven points all right but being that this for me is going to be a degree six polynomial i want to get a few more than seven all right if your degree is going to be high like this uh, you do need to go over that seven point minimum just because of the fact that a uh, two points make a single degree one polynomial which is a line two points make a line Three points make a parabola. So seven points would make a degree six polynomial perfect. And R squared would be one. But I don't want it to be, uh, I mean, I know it's not going to be perfect. I know that's going to be uh, incorrect. So I'm going to add a few more points to this. Go back to my point tool. It's not clicking for some reason. And I'm going to add a few more points to this thing to make sure that I've got it. Add another one right there. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Maybe we went a little overboard, but again, I wanted seven is the minimum. But if you're going to have a degree five, six polynomial, you need to go beyond seven to uh, try to get as many of those bends in the shape of it as you can. Okay, now at, now I've got these points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these points over to Desmos to help us get our model. And the way we do that, and again, we're starting at C, not including B, so start at C. I'm going to go to Desmos, I'm going to open up a new table, and in the X column are the X coordinates of this thing, and the Y column will go the Y coordinates. So I would pull that, the Desmos tab down to where it's on its own to where you can see the points from GeoGebra in there. Now I am also going to slide this down to where I can see as many points as I can to kind of save having to go back and forth. Alright, so just starting with the X coordinates first. I want to enter those in as I go. So I'm going to pause it right now and just kind of go through the process of entering all of those in. And then the same with the Y coordinates and make sure the Y coordinates correspond 
to the x coordinates as it was in GeoGebra. Okay, I've got them all in there. I'm going to blow this up and zoom in a little bit because I don't need to be that far out from my data. So that's good. And again, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six bins. So again, let me go back to the image. Uh, what did I see? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so a degree seven. All right, now, how do I tell a degree seven polynomial? Okay, well, normally a degree seven polynomial is going to start off y equals ax to the seventh plus, oops, plus bx to the sixth, and so on, and so on, and so on. But I'm trying to get a, a model from this data set that has x's and y's. Our x1 are the x's, y1 are the y's. So the way we get Desmos to do that is instead of y, we're going to say y1 from the table. And notice it went away. And then all these x's, we're going to use x1, x1. And notice they're going away too. But the reason they're going away is because we also need to take this equal sign away and use the little squiggle that's above shift, um, the button right beside the number one and tab. It's the tilde button. And now this thing is trying to build in right now just x to the seventh, x to the sixth. Now we're going to give it some more bins. We're going to go all the way down to um, just a constant. So at the seventh, the sixth, the fifth. So I'm going to go back in and do a C X one to the fifth to the fifth X, sorry, X one, X one to the fifth. Make sure you do your subscript first plus D X one. Ah, right, certain normal buttons to the fourth. All right, plus, all right, you got to skip E. E is the uh, constant, the, I'm sorry, the um, the natural base. So we have to skip it. So we're going to skip E and go to F, X1 to the third, all right, plus G, X1 squared, plus you get the idea, uh, G, H, x1 to the first, and then finally plus, I guess we're to i, uh, I'm going to go to j, I think i is like the imagine, oh, no, it goes through i, all right, so i is my constant in this case, and you see we we go through the points pretty well now, all right, it does a, a pretty decent job, I would expect a pretty good r squared here, and I do, I get a 0.948. Eight. So again, pretty good fit. Now, here's the part where, if it were me doing this, um, I would never choose something that's going to need a degree seven polynomial. So the reason I did that is because I've had people in the past that do mountain ranges. They take a pretty picture of a sunset. They've got a lot of mountains, and they want to use that in their picture. The problem is you're going to have to transfer this over to GeoGebra now, and you're going to have to type in all of these numbers, um, and you need to round them to the nearest four decimal places. So the smaller the degree polynomial that you model, the smaller, um, the less typing you have to do here. So most of the time people do a degree three, four, and sometimes five, but you know six and seven, it's going to be a lot of typing to do that. Okay, but but it is doable. So if you just you got to have a a degree um, seven polynomial, you can do that. You just, you know, just going to take a little bit of extra typing. All right, now when you go back to here, make sure before you type in your polynomial, you come over here to your settings and tell it that you want. Oh, sorry, go up to this settings bar. Tell it that you want four decimal places. By default, it'll be two, and you need to change it to four before you go in here and type in your, your new polynomial, okay? 
So I have typed in this polynomial. Notice I've got y instead of y1 equals instead of the tilde. Okay, And then in place of a, I've got what a is to four decimal places, 0 0.0124 x to the seventh. Right? And no longer x1, back to x. So I've replaced y back with the, the y1 back with y, tilde back with equals, x1 back with x. And now I'm just replacing a, b, c, d, all that stuff that I had before with the numbers there are. It's to four decimal places. Make sure you round it to four decimal places. Or make sure you change your settings to get it to four decimal places. Or it won't, it won't look right. It won't look the same as it did on Desmos, uh, especially over there at the ends. All right, so here is my model. Let me zoom out a little bit. What I'm going to put into the slide. So I would um, move this over a little bit. Again, all you really have to have here is you have to have your x-axis, your y-axis, and I need to see the model. Okay, so I would take that, snip that, and put that into my slide. And um, again, your your points, the model, all that stuff is covering up the image. So again, just give me a dis good description of what that image is uh, because all that stuff will be covering up. All right, this here, I, I could obviously tell what it is, but a lot of times there gets to be so much stuff on there that I can't see what it is that I'm looking at. So there is the polynomial model. Make sure your slide has the image. You need the equation. You can take a picture of the equation here uh, with your snipping tool. Just make sure to grab the y equals and all the other stuff in there with it. And then you can paste that in there as well. And um, again then, obviously paste this thing in there. Alright, so there's your polynomial equation, uh, function. If you have any questions about it, let me know. And again, I, I don't want you to think about it because I'm doing this video that I'm wanting you to do degree 7. Uh, I strongly discourage you from doing that. That was kind of the point of the video was of, of the extra work, the tediousness that would go into to making a, a degree seven, like for a mountain range or something like that. But it's completely up to you. I'm going to leave it up to you how you want to do it. If you do have a mountain range or something like this, you don't have to do every bend. You can just kind of pick and choose three or four of them in the middle if you want to. All right, guys, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.